Great. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to all the media folks joining us this morning. I'm Alicia Cordes, Communications Director at DEED. Happy to have you. Um, just as a reminder, please keep your devices muted to mitigate echoes. If you have any technology issues, please connect with Dawn. Her email is in the chat, or it will be in just a second. And then we look forward to taking press questions at the end. You can use the raise hand feature, or you can type your questions in the chat. So with that, we'll get started and over to you, Commissioner Verilak. All right. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today okay. to talk about our most recent employment data. And if any of you are covering things at the Capitol, I hope you are all getting adequate sleep at this exciting time. Uh, when it comes to the data, I wanted to start out with our monthly jobs figure for April. And those data indicate Minnesota employers added jobs for the fourth straight month with an increase of 3,900 jobs from March to April on a seasonally adjusted basis. If we break that down just a bit, the private sector gained 5,500 jobs, which exceeded a reduction on the government side, accounting for that net gain of 3,900 overall. If we look back over the past 12 months, Minnesota has seen job growth in 10 of those past 12, which is a good trend. Uh, and then back to just the monthly figures, if we look at super sectors, we had seven that gained jobs over the month, and the top gainers were financial activities up 1,800, manufacturing up 1,300, and construction up 1,100. And in just a moment, Angelina will have more details for you on sector performance. Uh, if we compare our state figures to those at the national level, we see Minnesota outpace the nation in private sector job growth over the month. Um, moving next to the labor force figures in the month of April, Minnesota labor force grew by 3,710 over the month, which is our third straight month of growth. And then again, zooming out to the past 12 months, we've seen more people join the state's labor force in six out of the last 12 months. Uh, we gained 5,600 people in the labor force if you look over the last six months, which is up 0.2% compared to 0.3% nationwide. And then if we look over the last five years to May of 2019, we are still down 2,725 people in the labor force uh, following those big losses during the pandemic, as well as long-term population aging trends. Uh, Minnesota is down 0.1% from five years ago compared to a gain of 3.3 nationally. When it comes to the labor force participation rate in the month of April, we held steady at a very healthy 68.0%. The unemployment rate also remained at 2.7%, where it has been for the last six months. And then comparing those to the national figures, labor force participation rate in the country as a whole, 62.7, again, compared to our 68%. And unemployment nationally ticked up one-tenth to 3.9%, again, compared to our 27 so we're certainly pleased to report this continued and steady economic progress, but also, of course, recognize uh, there's an opportunity to grow even faster in Minnesota if we can loosen that constraint of our tight labor market. And that's why our agency and partners across state government remain focused on doing all we can to bring more people into the labor market. And so, for example, DEED is implementing our Drive for Five workforce program that you've heard us talk about and other initiatives aimed at bringing underrepresented people into the labor force, into high growth career paths. Just yesterday, another example of that, I got to join the governor in announcing $6 million in child care grants that will ultimately help more parents find quality, affordable care and thus have the flexibility to start a business or find a great job. Back now just to a little bit more data. Uh, another way we look at the labor market is through vacancies. And on that front, we are seeing some loosening of conditions. We've got national data indicating Minnesota has 175,000 job openings as of February 2024, down from 192,000 a year earlier. And so we are chipping away at what has been an above trend number of vacancies. Uh, but despite the slight loosening of conditions, it has to be said there are still two job openings for every person looking for work in Minnesota. So the market is still tight and hence our continued focus in this area on workforce development. Um, We'll also just add, as I uh, prepare to wrap up and hand over to Angelina, uh, that we'll have additional job vacancy survey data coming out soon from Angelina's office, the Labor Market Information Office. And that'll have more detail on the types of openings we're seeing in Minnesota, which occupations and industries have the most vacancies, how salary offers and educational requirements are changing, and lots of other interesting details as well. So check that out in the weeks ahead. High level, 
Uh, the numbers we're releasing today, again, underscore the continued strength and resilience of the Minnesota economy with continued growth in our two key indicators of jobs and labor force. Uh, we're happy uh, to see that trend. But uh, we're not resting on the positive news, and we will continue our efforts to connect people who need work with the employers who need them. And with that, I will hand it off to Labor Market Information Director Angelina Nguyen for a deeper dive on the details. Thank you, Commissioner. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to dive into job change by super sector. So looking at over the month change, seven super sectors in Minnesota gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis. And I'm going to list them in the order of number of jobs gained. Financial activities led with 1,800 jobs gained, up 1%. Manufacturing gained 1,300 jobs, up 0.4%. Construction gained 1,100 jobs, up 0.8%. Uh, professional and business services gained 700 jobs, up 0.2%. Leisure and hospitality gained 600 jobs, up 0.2%. Trade, transportation, and utilities gained 500 jobs, a uh, 0.1% increase. And lastly, education and health services gained 300 jobs, up 0.1%. Um, over the month, four super sectors lost jobs. And again, I'm going to list them uh, by the order of number of jobs lost. Uh, government lost the most jobs, uh, 1,600, down 0.4%. Other services lost 500 jobs, down 0.4%. Information lost 200 jobs, down 0.5%, and mining and logging lost 100 jobs, down 1.5%. So overall, the gains outweigh the losses. So net Minnesota gained 3,900 jobs over the month on a seasonally adjusted basis, and that translates to a 0.1% growth. The private sector gained 5,500 jobs, up 0.2%. The prior month report uh, in March, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised down by 2,100 jobs. So the final estimate is that we gain 8,900 jobs between February and March, rather than the originally estimated 11,000 jobs. Still in that gain. Uh, next slide, please. Our labor force size increased by 3,710 people over the month, so totaling more than 3,101,000 people for April. The number of employed increased by more than 2,700 workers, and the number of unemployed increased by a little more than 1,000 people. Our labor force is still um, a little more than 30,000 workers smaller than it was pre-pandemic in uh, February 2020, uh, but we're, we're inching towards recovery. Uh, in terms of labor force participation rate, it stayed constant at 68% and it's been hovering around, um, around 68% for a while. Next slide, please. Now I'm going to look at employment change by super sector um, over the year. So over the year, Minnesota gained 44,507 payroll jobs, which is a 1.5% growth. The U.S. over the year growth rate is 1.8%, so a little faster. Minnesota's private sector gained almost 24,000 jobs, up 0.9%. U.S. private sector grew 1.7%. So for Minnesota, um, we saw seven super sectors gain job over the year and four super sectors lost jobs over the year. I'm going to list the gainers first um, in the order of number of jobs gained. So education and health services led uh, with more than 25,000 jobs gained, up 4.5%. And growth was propelled by the healthcare and social assistance sector, um, despite a decline in the educational services sector. And overall, the U.S. grew at a similar rate for this super sector at 4.3%. Uh, Second is government. Uh, government gained 20,000, six, more than 600 jobs, up 4.9%, outpacing the U.S. growth rate of 2.8%. And growth was healthy across all subsectors um, under government. Leisure and hospitality gained more than 8,700 jobs, up 3.4%. And all subsectors grew, with accommodation being the fastest growing subsector, um, growing at 6.3%. Nationally, the super sector grew a little slower than Minnesota um, at 2.3%.
And next, uh, trade, transportation, and utilities gained almost 4,900 jobs, up 0.9% compared to 0.7% uh, nationally. Retail trade and wholesale trade grew, while transportation and warehousing and utilities declined. Um, other services uh, gained almost 2,800 jobs, up 2.5%, outpacing the national rate of 1.8%. And all subsectors posted positive growth uh, under other services. Mining and logging gained 188 jobs, up 3% compared to uh, nationally, uh, the rate of change was 0.3%. And lastly, construction gained 201 jobs, up 0.2%. Heavy and civil engineering construction continue a really high growth uh, rate. Um, for April, it was 16.5% which bolstered the super sector in spite of losses in um, other subsectors under construction. The U.S. construction super sector grew at 3.3%. So those are were the gainers. Uh, four super sectors lost jobs over the year, um, and I'm going to list them again by number of jobs lost. Professional and business services lost more than 10,000 jobs, down 2.6%, while the U.S. grew 0.5%. And for Minnesota, most sectors, uh, most subsectors saw decline, and the biggest percentage decline was in employment services. Financial activities lost more than 3,500 jobs over the year, down 1.9%, while the U.S. grew 0.5%. And losses were consistent in most subsectors, um, except for real estate and rental and leasing, saw a little bit of growth. Information lost more than 2,200 jobs, down 5%, and all subsectors saw decline here. Uh, the U.S. also experienced decline in the super sector, um, down 1.4%. And lastly, manufacturing uh, in Minnesota lost more than 1,900 jobs over the year, down 0.6%, while the U.S. grew 0.1%. Uh, durable goods manufacturing saw decline, while non-durable goods manufacturing grew. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna look at um, wages and inflation. So for Minnesota, average hourly wages um, increased 33 cents over the month um, to $37.13 per hour. Um, over the year, our average hourly earnings increased $1.25, so um, growing 3.5%. Nationally, private sector wages increased 22 cents over the month and uh, grew 3.2% over the year. Comparing that to inflation, um, in April, inf the inflation rate was 3.4%. So Minnesota's wage growth was a tiny bit higher than uh, inflation for April. And with that, Commissioner, I will hand it back to you. Great. Thank you, Angelina. And I think with that, we would love to take any questions. So fire away if you've got them. Yeah. Going once, going twice. <laughs> well, what do we think, Lisa? Should we just go to wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, we'll wrap and please do uh, follow up with Mary on uh, the communications team at DEED if you have any questions uh, that don't come to mind right now, but uh, we'll wrap it today and Commissioner over to you for the last word. Yeah, great. So again, thanks everybody. Uh, it's a busy time of year, so we appreciate you making time for this. Um, first, just to recap what you heard, uh, again, continued job growth and continued labor force growth are good signs for the strength of the Minnesota economy. Jobs up once again uh, with growth in 10 of the past 12 months. Uh, and also we've added workers into the labor force for the third straight month. And then finally an observation, just that it's been uh, a great week of exciting news here uh, at DEED and, and for the state as a whole. Uh, two things stick out in particular. Um, on Monday, we announced a major expansion uh, at Polar Semiconductor in Bloomington funded by the US CHIPS Act and Deeds Minnesota Forward Fund Business Development Initiative, which was created in the 2023 session. 
this is going to create new jobs as well as help to drive a chips renaissance in America and in Minnesota, which we're very excited about. And then yesterday, another uh, notable and, and fun event that I've referenced already was joining the governor uh, to announce $6.2 million in grants to 21 child care providers across the state, something that we know is needed to help working families enter the workforce. So we're keeping our focus on these important issues facing Minnesota's economy and working hard, as always, to put DEED's mission statement into action, namely to empower the growth of the Minnesota economy for everyone. So our next employment numbers release will be June 20th. Hope you will join us for that. And I wish you all a good day and a good end of session. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.